there are gonna be spoilers for the Gossip Girl reboot within this video. Yeah. So sorry about that. We'll be honest, we don't exactly think it's trash. Hi. I'm Simone. I am Celeste. And today we decided we talk about things that are really important in today's generation and our world as a whole. Honestly, yeah. If you've been living under a rock, you don't know that Gossip Girl, the famous show from 2006 to 2012 yeah. on the CW, has been rebooted. It's back, and now it's on HBO Max. Honestly, we started watching the pilot of it like mm -hmm. when it came out, and we couldn't even get 10 minutes in without being like, what is this? We literally stopped it. We were like, I'm good, never yeah. mind. And then we were texting with our friends and they convinced us to go back, give it another shot. So, you know, if you've enjoyed Gossip Girl, if you've enjoyed the Gossip Girl reboot, if you've hated it, if you have no idea what it is, sit back and listen to us talk about it anyways. Yes. First, the first version. Rich kids in New York, Upper East Side, whatever, they've got rich parents. Basically a bunch of nepotism babies yeah. flaunting around the city, involved in drama that is literally so, so, so far removed from normal people's yeah. lives because they're just that rich. Like the entire show revolves around them creating their own drama. Yeah, it's almost a little bit Shakespearean if you yeah. will. At least the original was. Yes. In the original one, they don't reveal the identity of Gossip Girl mm -hmm. until the very last episode, leaving it as a focal plot point within For the, the entire story show of like, who is the person that's spreading all of these things about everybody else? Because mm -hmm. that's got some big repercussions. On this show, they actually tell you who Gossip Girl is like, in the first episode. Right off the bat, it's literally like us starting with following these teachers who are complaining about how the kids in the high school, like basically since their parents pay for the school, they've got like, they're pulling the strings on their jobs. One teacher starts talking to the others after one of them gets fired, like, oh my God, back in my day, like there used to be Gossip Girl to so keep all funny. the students in check. And they're like, what's Gossip Girl? As if this wasn't less than a decade yeah, ago. Yeah, they talk about it like it's been centuries. And what I wanna know is like, were there really no teachers that were around for both? times exactly like, why are there only millennial teachers literally they're all millennials not to mention they're not even cool millennials no they're so cringe the blonde bitch is so fucking annoying i believe her name is kate but i don't know mm. i genuinely don't remember the first shot of the pilot is her coming in on the train into grand central it's very serena vander what's very from yummy OG, from the og pilot mm -hmm. however now She's like on this weird mission to almost, I don't know, avenge the teachers being made fun of by what, 18 year olds? It's weird. Year olds? Like the teachers say they want to use Gossip Girl so that they can get the kids more to listen and respect to them. Like that didn't do anything in Gossip Girl before. Literally like one of them fucks a teacher yeah. in the first version of the show. Yeah. While Gossip Girl like says the entire thing. What makes them think that some Instagram- and if anything, I remember that plot line. The only thing to come out of that was that the teacher left. Mm -hmm. The student was fine. I know. It's gonna be the same old. I, that's what I'm thinking is gonna happen. The teachers are gonna be like, no, we're on the right side of this because we're Gossip Girl. Mm -hmm. But really, the nepotism babies will always win. I do like the choice that they made with making it an Instagram mm -hmm. because to me that makes more sense. Yeah. You know? Like it makes sense to see the pictures, have like a whole like photo album of just like what's the tea, what's going on in the Upper East Side. However, another thing that kind of comes from that is like almost the main players, the big high school students that we're sort of following for this new storyline mm -hmm. set, they're like the main girl, Ju Julian. Yeah. Okay, another thing is that oh. all of these people have horrible Let's names. Let's talk about the names, if I can fucking remember them. They're all hyphens. Yeah. If you want to have memorable characters, maybe give them names we can remember. And maybe don't introduce them all at once. Either. Yeah. There's so many of them too. So many. In the original Gossip Girl, we've got maybe like six people to focus on, like three guys, Even three still, girls. those storylines are built up like over time, yeah. so you at least know everyone. Exactly. Not to mention that every character seems like one of the old characters just changed a little yeah. bit. So we've got the main bitch and her sister, mm -hmm. Julian and Zoya. Uh -huh. Literally, it's just a One Tree Hill thing going on It is on One here. Tree Hill. They're half siblings whose parents hate each other. Mm -hmm. Julian Seems like a mix of the worst parts of Blair and Serena. Yeah. She's an influencer. It just doesn't sit right. Cause like seeing her on like the live story and stuff, like 
it doesn't work like that. Like Serena didn't give them that much attention. You in know? some sense, to me, it's almost like a lot more showboaty on another level because like she's she knows people are watching. Yeah, you know what I mean, like Serena. Serena didn't care. That's what made her cool. Yeah, it was just like, oh, she just so happens to get photographed. Mm -hmm. That's the whole appeal. Meanwhile, this girl is literally like, her friends are almost like her Instagram managers or something. Yeah, and like, they're like planning out her photos. It's, yeah. It's ridiculous. Her other friends don't really have any other lines or names. Next, we've got Blonde Blair. I don't believe her name is Audrey. Okay. She's an honest bitch. It's almost like she got the good parts of Blair yeah. and Serena and Julian got, got the, the bad, bad parts. parts. It's completely true. Ever since you said she's the Blonde Blair, I can't unsee it. Like down to the mannerisms and mm -hmm. everything. The other half sister. Mm -hmm. We were talking. She gives yeah. us major Jenny vibes. Plus Vanessa. Jenny and Vanessa vibes. Because both of them were like the outcast that like comes in and has to like work their way in. Mm -hmm. One of the worst parts about this reboot is this plot line that is like, unfortunately, it seems like a major plot line. Mm -hmm. The boyfriend of yeah. Julian is now into her half sister. If I had a fucking half sister who I just met and my boyfriend of like multiple years like broke up with me, said like it wasn't working out, and then moved on to my half sister that we both just met. What the fuck? Literally, and also like not to mention the boyfriend is essentially rich and popular Dan Humphrey. Yeah, all the same mannerisms and like, oh, I don't really care about things like that like, kind I'm of too Dan. Cool. In the beginning, he seems like the only one who's like got a real head on his shoulders. A good head on his shoulders, realizing that they're own, they're in their own kind of bubble of a world. To me, honestly, like the whole torn between siblings trope is just so overused. It that is I just, super overused. And I just hate it. This one's just on like the acting level. Mm -hmm. He looks so much older than her. I can't get past it. I don't that know why. That is so true. Continuing on with the characters who are just like different versions of other characters. Mm -hmm. Are we going to talk about bisexual Chuck? Let's talk about bisexual Chuck. First of all, he looks 27. In the original, Chuck in the beginning was also like so over the top and like, what the fuck am I watching? Yeah, like it's just the absolute sleazy, swarmy dude who yeah. everyone's like, this dude is purely it created to just mess show up you. Things. Yeah, and, and just like develop the plot. So we obviously know that bisexual Chuck is gonna get more of a plot line as we go along. He's like, I think my Zanny's <sighs> kicking in. That and part, like, I had to pause it at that part. I was like, Already in the first episode, we see him trying to lead on Asian Nate. Yeah. Okay, another character is Asian Nate, who seems like the nice guy dating blonde Blair, that they both love each other, but are kind of realizing that they don't work. Asian Nate is realizing that he kind of likes bisexual Chuck, and blonde Blair is also kind of realizing she likes bisexual Chuck. So the whole thing is this couple realizing that they both like bisexual oh. Chuck. So the thing is, I'm basically just just like, is bisexual Chuck really only being used as like a sexual plot line in that he's gonna like, what, create a throuple with the other two? I don't know. Or like drama and like- I think it's gonna be drama. We come to a whole new, even worse section of this reboot. And I'm talking about dialogue. Like, Sigh. it is so obvious that we are watching actors. Yes. You know how like you're watching a TV show and like you can't for a second like focus on the story because you're just, all you can see is these people are reciting lines. It feels like they're always about to break into song, but I kind of like that. Mm -hmm. I like the sort of like weird satirical musical vibe, but the only thing is like, they just need to commit. Yeah. They need to commit because they're either going to make fun of themselves with the dialogue or they aren't. Yeah. That's both. the thing with like the original Gossip Girl is that the dialogue was, it just steered into the skid so completely that it was almost satirical and like how different their whole world is mm -hmm. from normal people. One of Ever. the first scenes is this conversation between Zoya and her dad, who not to mention looks younger than the rest of the high he schoolers. He looks like her brother. Literally, it is a purely expositional conversation. They're literally just having a conversation about like, well, you know your mom died. Well, you know you're going to this new school. What am I gonna do? I've never been to New Girl before. How am I gonna handle this with seeing my half-sister? I'm like, wow, thanks for telling me the plot in the most lazy way ever. Yeah, pretty much. What, if I looked away for that one conversation when I've not known what was going on? Mm -hmm. I would have thought she was talking to her brother or her boyfriend because it doesn't look like her dad either. Another thing I wanna know is where is my parent drama? I was also down for the tea with the adults. King Rufus. 
King Rufus, Miss Lily, you know? I would like that tea. So far, all we've really gotten in that tea department is that the two dads mm -hmm. of the two main girls, Zoya and Julian, mm -hmm. do not like each other. Yeah. I will say that one thing that, thank God, they got right is getting Kristen Bell. Yes. I want to know how much they paid her because get your bag, Kristen. Mm -hmm. If she was not there, the show would not it would be done. The first 10 minutes were unbelievably bad. I really think as a whole for this show, at least for the pilot, mm -hmm. just sit through the first third of it mm -hmm. because it's like pulling teeth. Mm -hmm. But once you make it past there, it picks up yeah. a lot more. The second it gets a they lot have, better. You know how TV shows kind of have like an intro card, their title card? Yeah. So like what, once it says Gossip Girl, everything gets better. Yeah, we're cooking then. Yeah. But that lead up, that build up, it was so, so bad. bad that we almost did not give it a chance yeah. afterwards. Yeah, so shitty. Kristen Bell, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for coming back and giving Gossip Girls reboot its real voice. It really does make it feel a lot better. It and does. And to me, it helps it like, I don't know, modernize the thing in a good way, even though, once again, it was less than a decade ago. I know. I, I was too. upset when I heard that they were gonna reboot it. I think we all were. Yeah, because we don't want it. Like, everyone who watched Gossip Girl, everyone who likes Gossip Girl, is fine with the Gossip Girl we had. If you aren't gonna bring back the characters, then just leave, leave it. it. We don't want it. If they wanted to, they could have just been a little bit more creative, a little bit more thoughtful, mm -hmm. and honestly just repurposed the story and changed a few more elements to make it something entirely new instead of a Gossip Girl reboot. One thing, aside from the really cringy dialogue, I do really like um, the music style that Me they've too. been using so far. They've been picking great songs. Yeah, the filming too. Mm -hmm. Like, they got that HBO money and at least in terms of actual stylistic choices, they're using it very well. Mm -hmm. Like the way they film it in certain ways, it looks like they're like rulers or something, which I like I a do lot. like the cinematography of it and how it's a lot more like outside mm -hmm. looking in rather than like you're in the hustle and bustle yeah. of the whole thing. Yeah. So I do agree with that. I like that. This just brings me back to one of the plot points that's really just not sitting right with me. Mm. The teachers spying on the kids thing. Part of that whole hustle and bustle and while I did criticize bisexual Chuck for only being used as like sexual plot lines, mm -hmm. sex motivated a lot of the stuff in the original as it could in this reboot. These teachers are spying on these kids and literally like watching them in their windows. Mm -hmm. Like one of them legit goes, sees them changing and like taking their clothes off outside mm -hmm. of the window. And takes a picture. Like is that not? I. Like, what? Isn't... Okay. That feels pretty illegal to me. Like, my thing is, there really is only one way for this entire thing to end. Mm -hmm. And that's all of the teachers going to jail for, yeah. like, exposing minors, mm -hmm. endangerment, defamation of character, mm -hmm. and stalking. How the fuck were all the teachers so easily on board to commit this act that will make them lose their jobs, probably not get a job again in education. Yeah. They're that mad that one person got fired that they're willing to go to lengths as great as bringing back from the dead a blog that literally like wreaked havoc on, on their people's city. lives. People, yeah. Why the fuck are we supposed to care about the teachers or anything like that. If you're gonna let us in on their secret, shouldn't we at least feel inclined to, I don't know, like- Cause really all we've got so far storyline wise for the teachers, one of them is being seduced by you guessed it, bisexual oh. Chuck. Mm -hmm. And the other one is kind of, you know, starting to fall for the really young dad. Mm -hmm. Surprise, surprise. If it's that much of a hassle mm -hmm. to have to be a teacher of kids this rich and this, um, you know, entitled, quit. They've mentioned a lot of times how their salaries as teachers is not mm -hmm. super high. But they think <laughs> they're saying they can't quit because they won't find another job is the reason why they won't quit. Right? They've set up these two parallel plot lines, but the real problem is neither of them have very solid roots for us to cling to mm -hmm. or to want to finish out. Yeah. I am kind of like 
more entertained and kind of interested to see like where the show goes next and almost what locations they do like because in most episodes of the original Gossip Girl they found they took like, it everywhere they found like a gathering or some sort at like in every episode mm -hmm. to bring all the characters together mm -hmm. like there was almost always a formal event like a fashion show a dinner a party mm -hmm. I do kind of like that of like being able to see yeah. what they sort of interpret that as now mm -hmm. we're really not connected to anybody mm -hmm. in this show all we know about Asian Nate is that he's here. Yeah. All we know about bisexual Chuck is that he's here. Yeah. All we know about the two girls, the kind of tall ones that um, are always next to the Julian one, is that they're there. I don't know their names. We haven't seen anything about them. The only thing they say is... It cut off mid-rant of mine. But the point is, I understand that completely. We don't even know those girls' names. They're kind of funny. Like, yeah. I like the tall one. I do. Like, I kind of think both of them are funny. Okay, guys. I expect more from HBO Max. You have HBO Max's money. That's the thing. It seems like HBO Max, they took the budget on this one. They threw it at the cinematography. For sure. They must have hired the writers. I don't know. I don't know where they hired them from. Something about the way they speak. It it's just, like they've never talked before in their yeah. lives. All of these people are just like NPC characters walking around New York. Mm -hmm. Like you just tap them and they're like, maybe my Zanny just kicked in. The only thing I really, really did like was that they all ate lunch on the steps together. Yeah, because I think the steps, it's iconic. Mm -hmm. It's great. We really only saw them eat in the steps when they with just the girls in the original one, so I like that they're all doing it as a gang. Yeah, that's, that's what cool. I was gonna say. I do like that they've um, made the click, not only for girls, because yeah. it makes a lot more sense, because that is one thing that's changed in the 10 years. Like, if any of you know what it's like to be in middle school, high school, whatever, and the popular group of kids is a big group of guys and girls, and it bleeds into the storyline of that incestuous friend group, mm -hmm. almost. Pretty that's much it. the main like, essence of it, we don't care about the Friends. Yeah. Granted, these opinions, while harsh, obviously. Very harsh. And they're not even good opinions. Not like, good it's opinions. Not like, it's not like we're credible and worthy to listen to on this anyways. This is all our current opinions after seeing only the first two episodes, which my opinion of the show has gotten better and better watching more of it. Agreed. I'm just still unimpressed. I just can't stop thinking that as nice as some aspects of it are, as cringy as some are of others, was this necessary? The answer is no. No. It does say something if we were willing to make a video about it. Yeah, we were, pa we're passionate enough. We also just watch a lot of TV. If you would like us to keep talking about like our Gossip Girl thoughts or like make or more videos on, about like, it. TV shit in general. Yeah, we would totally love to do that. Because all we do is watch TV. It's literally movies. all we do. Thank you guys for hanging out with us yes. today. Hope you enjoyed this, kind yes. of just a more, we're talking at you about yes. our thoughts and opinions. Yes. But like the video, I guess, if you liked it. Mm -hmm. Subscribe and if you feel like sticking around. That's up to you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Goodbye.